Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from Pig2 Design. In this video, I will show you how I've rigged and animated this torso model in Blender. This asset is one from the menus created for Noarad Conspiracy, the video game. The idea was to create an animated icon that could be mixed with some affixes to show that the character is getting stronger. While the original ID was a simple arm, our concept artist Spoon advised to use a full torso that would read betterly and looked more impressive. It was then sculpted and retopologized by our character artist Anthony Pico. He then applied one of our homemade smart material from Substance Painter and for one me the model. I generally ask him to keep the topology flow as simple as possible and I sometimes add supporting loops while rigging. This allows me to make the model perfectly fit my rigging needs. Since the model won't have more than two or three animations, I won't be doing like a super advanced rig. I will use only forward kinematics for the arm and I want to allow the full body to be stretchable. Finally, I want to add secondary controllers for the pecs and the biceps to add secondary motion that will input weight to these muscles. I always start my rig by creating the deformation skeletons, trying to align the bone with the different joint and keep their rotation consistent. One cool trick I use for harm that will allow me to get better deformation but also get stylized animation by breaking the shape of the arm is to subdivide the deformation bone inside the arm. I can then distribute the deformation along those bones. This is very handy for wrist twisting for example. This is the kind of setup you can learn in my latest course, The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender. I've also added some extra deformation bones for the biceps because I want to animate them and give them some extra motion. I've also added a bone for the pectoral muscles that will allow me to add some jiggling. I can then symmetrize the whole rig. Then I will skin my mesh to the armature with automatic weight. Then I will refine each deformation using weight painting. When I felt it was needed, I've also added some loop cuts on the fly and to preserve my UVs, I've just made sure that the Protect UVs checkbox was enabled in the tool. To rig the torso, I've used my main workflow, but I've moved the main controller a little lower in the chain just upon the hips. For the hips, I will just create a reversed bone that will drive the deformation bone and then I will just unconnect the upper bone of the spine from the hips to avoid them to rotate when the hips are rotating. An additional bone is created that will allow me to whether use a stretch to constraints or not so that I will be able to stretch the hips or the other parts of the torso. To rig the spine, I will just isolate each bone of the spine and give them a secondary controller that will be driven by the main torso controller. The idea is to then input a falloff on each of those secondary controllers so that the spine will bend or wherever be stretched out progressively. Each intermediate bone will be the parent of the next deformation bone in the chain and will be constraining the previous bone in the chain with a depth track and stretch to constraint. This is the kind of ring you can use for a tail, for fingers, for whatever you want. I will then create a new intermediate bone and by playing with their parenting and a copy constraint with different falloff, I will be able to increase or decrease the influence of the main controller. This will allow me to rotate or stretch the whole spine using only one controller. I've then created an option that allow me to isolate the rotation for the neck and then worked on the fall-off mechanism for the pectoral muscle, meaning that it will be parented both to the shoulder 
and the second bone will be parented to the spine, for example, those will influence a third bone that has a copy transform from each of those separated bones with different influences. And this will make this bone following both the spine and the shoulder, but with a fall off. I've then created a mechanism allowing me to isolate the rotation for the arm so that it will or will not follow the rotation from the torso, which is very handy whenever you want to input shoulder movement but keep the position of your arm. Then I did a chain of tweakers for the arm as I did for the spine rig. I've rigged the palm bone, kept the fingers simple and then added some wrist fall off. I've also added a little controller for the biceps, created some bone groups and assigned some custom shapes for readability, then keyed all the channels that I would use during the animation to create some kind of king set. And I was ready to start animating the torso. Once ready, I've enabled the auto cane, set the cane to available so that Blender will write a keyframe only on an existing one, avoiding to add keyframes on unused channel and keep my dope sheet clean. I then started blocking the animation, meaning that I will set all the keyframes to step interpolation so that there is no unwanted interpolation between the keyframes and I have a good readability of the animation. Since I wasn't pleased with the preview of the model, I just selected another texture channel in the shader and then I've overlaid it upon the matcap so that I had those shadows upon a base matcap, making the model easy to read and so my work easier to read too. I knew I wanted the animation to be very fast and snappy because it was going to be an animation that supports an information inside of the game. It's not something that supports an action or a character behavior. I'm just saying through this animation, my character is now stronger. So I can't use a three or four second animation to explain to the player that his character as a bonus. Since the model is supposed to appear upon the head of the character, I needed it to kind of inflate or appear and I didn't want it to appear basically. I wanted it to be very small and then pop upon the head of the character and kind of make this flex animation. This is why I've started with a first pose where the character is bending on himself with his arm wrapping around him, as if it was a closed box. Then the character opened and spread his arms before doing this flex action. And finally, in the last pose, he is like sucked back into his origin. A bit as if it was some kind of gene from the lamp like in Aladdin, for example. During this stage, I don't really care about the timing. This is why I space all my poses by five frames. Here, I'm just focusing on the position of the character, his shape, his gesture. And the more accurate and detailed is your blocking, the easier will be the polishing later on. Especially here, where there is no hanging equipment or hairs or tail or whatever kind of secondary motion that will be input into the character. Only the biceps and the muscle from the chest will have secondary movement and I will add them later on during the polishing. If I was to work onto a full detailed character, I will not pose the different part of equipment, but mainly focus on body mechanics. Then, regarding the equipment like clothes or everything that has a secondary or follow-through motion, I will work on these during the polishing or the splining at least. Once all the poses are blocked, I will start working a bit on the timing by moving all the different poses in time. 
So I'm still using stepped interpolation, meaning that there is no easing into the different animation. This makes it easier to read. And this is generally a moment where I'd like to add some intermediate pose that will add reading the animation and making it more appealing. I will also fix some position or input some overshoots and extreme poses. Here is how the animation look after this blocking stage. I will then switch the interpolation mode to Bezier and start splining the animation. Most of the time I start reworking the main torso controller and this up and down motion. I was feeling that the animation was not super reactive and a bit slow and this is because I started working in 24 frames per second while we generally work in 30 frames per second in Noara. So it was a bit visually disturbing and I've just spotted this a little later on. Once I was happy with my main controller, I've worked with the chest controller that allowed me to bend the spine and make it jump up and down. I then used space switching to polish the animation of this control chest. I've baked its animation to an empty and then constrained it with the empty, allowing me to control the animation of the chest using the empty but in world space, making it way easier to animate and read the curve than to work with a parented bow. This is one of the techniques I've learned into Richard Lico animation Sherpa courses and that I've covered in my previous tutorial. The idea is to bring more squashing and stretching to the chest so that it will look more contrasted and even more fun to watch. Once I was happy with the result, I've just baked back the empty onto the chest controller. Blender will bake the curves into a new action, so you will have to go into this newly created action, copy all the animation curve from the chest bone, and paste it into your current animation. This method will allow you to increase the quality of your animation and to really, really greatly speed up your workflow. Since most of the poses of my character were symmetrized, I've just polished the beginning of the animation on both arms and when I reach frame 9 or 10, I've just been polishing one of the arms and then I will just mirror the animation by copying the curves and then passing them onto the other arm, selecting the bone and pressing Ctrl Shift V. For the pectoral muscle, instead of using any physics, I've baked an empty to the position of the chest muscle so that I can switch to world space and then constraint this pectoral muscle with the empty. I've then cleaned up my empty animation, getting rid of the Euler rotation and the scaling because I won't use them. And then I've slightly offset those keyframes in time by removing the nearest frame snapping and then polishing those frames by hand by just removing the unwanted keyframe and slightly moving them. Then you just need to bake back the animation onto the pectoral muscle as we did before for the torso. I've then repeated the process for the biceps muscles baking an empty to it, then making the animation of the empty cycling by pressing Shift E, then getting rid of the frame snapping so that I can move those keyframes freely in time and really slightly offset them in time so that I don't have to polish the curve by hand that much. This slight delay in the motion will create this overlap animation for me and then I just add a slight jiggling working on the z-axis of the curves. It was really tempting to add a lot of jiggle, but the thing is that you want a snappy animation because these are muscle and if there is too much jiggle, it won't look as the movement is controlled by the character, nor it is a hard flexed muscle driving the animation. On the final polishing pass, 
I just worked on the different arm joint with creating during the rigging stage, allowing me to break the shape of the arm so that I have a smoother movement, especially on the very beginning and the very end of the animation, where the arm movements are very, very fast. And then I was done. So I can't wait to see the result with a layer of FXs in-game. This is the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.